that is the draft. Um, we land three stud defensemen here in a row. Lego, Weimer, and Staubitz. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 18 of this NHL 22 Quebec Nordiques relocation franchise mode where we move the Arizona Coyotes up north to Quebec City. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner of the video. I know it kills watch time on these videos, but I really suggest that you go and get caught up on any episodes you missed because, well, last episode we went through the playoffs, got swept by the Buffalo Sabres in the conference finals, but made it pretty much as far as the... Uh, Nordique slash Coyotes franchise has ever made it. So that was very exciting. And um, well, now we've got a draft to get to as uh, we do need to get through some player awards as well. But uh, we've got a decent looking draft class coming up. And uh, the game is lagging, but that's just my Xbox to be completely honest. I bet you. No, no, it's not doing updates right now. That's surprising. So anyways, um, let's uh, let's get through some player awards. I don't remember who exactly was in the retiree class. There weren't that many guys that were big name retirees, if I'm not mistaken, except for maybe Sidney Crosby. Um, but there's your team awards. Go figure, right? Um, Dry Settle wins the Art Ross. Pud Colson wins the Hart. Riley with the Norris. Neilander with the Lady Bing. Sorelli wins the Calder. Again, go figure. Dry Settle with the Colin Smythe. Uh, Freddie Anderson with the Vesna. Wallstead and Angelkovic in um, Minnesota there getting the Jennings this year. Yoki Haru wins the Masterton. Boschman, or LA's coach, wins back-to-back -back Jack Adams. That's really decent. Dreisaitl with the Selkie. Pud Colson with the Lindsay. And, of course, the Rocket Richard as well. So, now that we are through that, um, I'm just going to do some quick um, draft interviews here, and then we will get to the entry draft. So, something I am noticing here is that a guy like Marcel Legault is slated by our scouts to fall to number seven i don't know if that actually happens but if it does maybe we'll trade up for him that would be a very interesting prospect to go for obviously we've got other guys in here that we are more interested in um such as obviously gabriel weimer um he would just be a great fit for this team in my opinion we're not really gonna interview him too too much but there are some other guys in here I noticed Seth Stobitz is an NHL-ready uh, defenseman, so we're going to keep an eye on him. Um, after Stobitz, Keeler, I'm not thinking of as much. Playar is interesting too, but I'm kind of actually feeling not Dowd either. Where is he? I'm kind of actually feeling Wurtanen. I think he's going to fall pretty much right into our hands as long as we can... Uh, make some decent picks here, but apart from him, uh, who else are we going to go for? All right, guys, so I am done my draft interviews now, and uh, we can get to the entry draft here. So should be a good one. We're in the 2026 entry draft. Uh, I believe the Red Wings will be taking Francisco Hopkins first overall. I know you, some of you guys wanted me to trade up for him, but I just don't really see that happening. If anybody, it's going to be a guy like Lego or Yashin, if they do end up falling past pick six, then I think it's worth it to trade for them. But we'll see what happens as uh, we get into this. But I've kind of got my targets picked out. Um, we do want to make at least one trade here. And this one trade, not being for a super high picks, but I have kind of picked out some uh, players that look very interesting here too. So um, first off believe the team I'm planning on trading with is yeah okay uh, we're gonna try to find a trade I don't know exactly what they are gonna want um, but we're gonna be trying to make a trade with the Vancouver Canucks and they are going to or we're gonna ask for them to give up picks number 36 that was not what I wanted okay We're asking for pick 36 and then a later round pick because there is a guy in here that I kind of want to take. So um, we're going to go pick 181 and pick number 36 from the Canucks. is only going to cost us... Uh, I don't want to give up Bowmeister or Fogel or Kubina or Tease. Okay, so we can do Gundler and 
Kolyachnik. Um, and a third. That's actually not too bad a deal. And then that way we don't have to renew Gunler necessarily. And it's a pretty cheap deal. So I'll take that. Um, not the best deal ever, but not terrible either. Um, so anyways, I'm actually more interested to see how the top end of this draft goes. And Hopkins is an 82 rated franchise power forward. So he's going to be sweet. Detroit's really going to enjoy having a guy like that on their team. All right, pick number two goes to Jerkina. Not surprising. Oh, he doesn't have... Oh, doesn't have a zone ability. That kind of sucks. Okay. Pick three, uh, De, Ro De Rosier, I believe is how you say it. I might be wrong. Um, but really low-end pick for a third overall pick. Typical Montreal Canadian style. Spachek goes fourth. Interesting. Okay, I don't think he was actually slated to go at four. Um, it should have been, yeah, he was slated to go at five, so we could potentially see, um, a switch up in the draft order here as Yashin goes fifth. Interesting. Okay. So like I said, I was high on Elijah Yashin. He turns out to be an 81 overall. Oh my God. Okay. So he does. Okay. Um, Chicago actually just did that. Really Chicago? You passed up on Lego, a French Canadian defenseman. You're serious, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to try it. We're going to try for a trade here. Um, and it might entail Lucas Raymond, to be completely honest. But <sighs> St. Louis, what do you want to do to give up that uh, that seventh? I'm sure there's a player they like. Edvinson, that's it? No way. I only have to give up Simon Edvinson for... Seriously. You know what? I've been trying to offload Edmondson for a couple seasons now, um, simply because he just didn't fit our system too well. So you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Simon Edmondson, one for one for the seventh overall pick. Not a bad deal, in my opinion. And in exchange, we're going to get Marcel Legault, who might be a little bit worse, but I think has the potential to turn into a top-end defenseman for this team. Wow, okay. I was not expecting that. So just to clarify, the defenseman who is ranked number four overall on the board that has potentially it looks like he has yoink and maybe like wheels and a couple other really good abilities here he also grew he was 511 the whole draft year and he grew to six foot so that's sweet wow okay okay so we are gonna take marcel to go um no option no option no question there when he falls to pick number seven over teams like chicago and a few others here we have to take this guy, especially since it was a one-for-one -one Simon Edmondson trade. That's actually, oh, that's actually so good. I love it. And he's 79 overall. He doesn't have wheels, but he's got off the rush, shrug it off, and in reverse. So he's going to be a very interesting defenseman, especially picked at number seven, but I'm super happy with that. Um, just as far as he's going to have great stick lifts, um, going to be able to fire off one-timers while he's on the rush too, which is awesome. So yeah, I'm very happy with that Lego trade, and I know that you guys were like, don't trade up anymore. Pick seven isn't really trading up that far, considering we're picking at pick 28. So, um, yeah, okay, let's get through the rest of the draft now. All right, so simulating over to our 28th overall pick, uh, looks like Weimer is still on the board, which is perfect. Uh, a couple other really decent picks. Ooh, Fitzmorris, he falls significantly for a really decent defenseman. Seattle gets a really good player there. Brylin, we knew, was one-year ETA. Boston picks him up. But the fact that we got the go at seven is just fantastic and really deepens our defensive core yet again. And then never mind the fact that Weimer is also listed as an NHL-ready lefty for defense and he's 75 overall okay so not quite as high he's got shut down though which is huge that's gonna make him such a good defenseman in the near future and of course he is playing for Sault Ste. Marie so we'll probably send him back there for one year but that's okay so over to pick 36 now um that we did again we traded up to Vancouver for pick 36 because again I spotted somebody who looks very interesting and well was there anybody else really good in between these picks doesn't really look like it yeah wow that was uh kind of bad picking by most of the teams here but next up i am looking not at Juntanen, not at ortiz look at that eta on seth stobitz um 
we are going to keep an eye on him not just keep an eye on him we're gonna pick him um i don't know why he's ranked low but yeah 78 overall medium top four defenseman he's got quick pick which is an interesting zone ability it always is uh very annoying to play against i find and 46 points in uh in just 61 games that's really decent for a draft year defenseman so he's got great skating all those things that you look for in a defenseman especially a two-way and now we head over to pick 59 so looking at the rest of the board here um oh poyar should have traded up for him he would have been a pretty nice sniper to bring in but oh well you know we got lots of prospects still um McElhaney too very nice OFD offensive defenseman there so I think we're taking Wurton in here uh, going a little off the board but that's okay I'm almost certain that he's going to be an elite goalie and he's six foot three as well so uh, that he is beautiful I was kind of worried he actually might turn out to be a starter but uh nope no no worries there and I feel like, yeah, hold on, I totally messed this up. I was supposed to trade other options to Vancouver. Whoops. Okay, um, that's okay. We'll find trades for some picks that I was planning to get rid of, but that's okay. We'll do that right now. So I'm literally just looking to get rid of these next two picks because I just don't or didn't have a lot of prospects pinned for these picks. So um, looks like we've got 28 potential trades. SL and Dell, I don't think we really need him. Um, anybody I like in here? There's actually a lot of options for that second overall pick, or second round pick. It would just be nice to get a second rounder back over anything else, but also unlikely. Um... A lot of interesting options here, but... Carolina seems to have a lot of options. Tyson Jost. I don't think we really need Tyson Jost. I don't think we really need anybody in particular here, but Jost is interesting. Okay, what about Carolina? Carolina seemed to be offering a pick and a player on the majority of these deals, so. Um... I wanted to say Ruo Stalinen could be decent, but probably not. Um, they were trading Nordstrom or Markov. You know what? I kind of like Markov as a player. To be completely honest, if we go Markov in like a third next year, I'll take that. That's actually a really decent deal in exchange, so... Oh, we gotta sweeten the value just a touch, hey? Okay, um, let's just go back to the trade finder um, and just offer those same two picks again and pick up whatever the Markov deal was. I guess it would have been a fourth um, looking at it now because I don't know what else it could have been. So we don't want to trade pick 190. Okay. Um, oh, it's for the 88th overall pick. That's a little annoying. Okay, um, and okay, Yo and Sue is gonna get picked there. Let's just go offer this trade to Carolina, um, because this is getting annoying now. The fact that we haven't made this trade yet is like, okay, let's get it done. Markov and. We just grab a fourth rounder next year. I'll take it. Fourth round isn't actually a bad round to pick in at all, so. Okay, that should go through, and it does. Okay, beautiful. All right, we have Vladimir Markov. Um, so an interesting deal there. All right, so simulating all the way over to pick number 181 now. I'm sure we're gonna miss some players in here, but you know, that's a risky take when you trade away a bunch of mid-round picks. So, 
Um, fifth round, anything going on there, really? Ooh, Pasternak was nice. Ooh, LeBlanc was also nice. Um, he is 19, but still, oh my god, he's six foot three, and he plays center and wing. Nice pick by uh, Carolina there, or Carolina, Florida, sorry. Um, so he's a very nice player, Numelin as well, another grinder, interesting, okay, so round five was really solid, what about round four, um, Kudrak was okay, Medano was okay, Buzas was okay, a lot of okay players in these later rounds, nobody crazy insane, but, um, what about the third round, because we didn't even pick in the third round either. Round three sees a starter and more who could turn out to be good. Um, Dagenet we knew was a three-year ETA, so that makes sense. And wow, that's pretty much it. We're, what, in round six now? And is there even anybody decent picked in round six? Not that I can see. All right, so for our next pick, we are looking at, um, it's got to be Thompson. DeAndre Thompson. It's not Thompson, it's Thompson. So, DeAndre Thompson, welcome to the Nordiques, and he is a low elite. Beautiful. All right, 53 overall playmaker. Um, not actually that bad a pick at all, and hopefully we can see some serious growth out of him in the next season. All right, over to pick number, what, 190 now? So just a couple picks in between the two that we're going to select here. Um... See, I could go with Nold. I don't exactly trust German players. We haven't had a ton of luck with them. Um, so the guy I was going to pick was the next kind of available potential on the board, being Dawson Vandenbusch, um, Canadian, who we've had a lot better results with Canadian picks. So let's take him. Um, and he is also a low elite as well. I thought he was going to be a low nine for sure, but... Not bad. Um, yeah, that's not bad at all. I traded up for Thompson, but I was like, okay, we've got some late picks. It's better not to really use them and just, or better not to trade them away and just use them. Two goals in 27 games. Not spectacular for Windsor, but again, hopefully we'll see some growth. He's a sixth round pick and might turn out to be something, but looking through the rest of round seven and, okay, low four in Thorson. Um, apart from that, Nobody really? Okay. What about the last little bit of round six? Nope, Vandenbush was absolutely a great pick. So, finally looking at Lacroix. The last real name we got scouted at all on this list. He's a huge body too. Um, this guy's actually a massive player as well. Derek Koliakovo. But we're going to take Emmanuel Lacroix. Who turns out to be okay a low nine which again i was expecting but you never know and 44 points in 63 games he's actually doing really good for renoranda there but um anyways that is it for this draft only two more picks to be made there weber wasn't that bad either but that is the draft um we land three stud defensemen here in a row lego weimer and Stobitz all stacking up the left side of this team for the near future and uh yeah that's actually very exciting how that turned out all right so advancing here guys and something i did just want to touch on nice and quickly was the fact that when we go way back which isn't actually that way back but when we go back to last year at the draft at the 2025 draft we did end up going to winnipeg and trading a 2025 first round pick which was the 16th overall pick um and morgan riley who to be fair morgan riley did just win the norris which is an amazing feat by itself and immediately makes it look like we lost the trade but when you take into account that we got four first round picks in total back for that deal it makes it a little less stinging so Yes, Winnipeg got Riley, who's a 90 overall defenseman now. He's one of the best players on that team. Um, and then I wonder, who did they actually pick with the 15th overall pick? Was it Kopecky? Because if it was Kopecky, I don't think it was. But Kopecky is nice. Um, anyways, 2025 second. Or was it the first? 
It was a first rounder, but it wasn't Sotheby. Who did they even get? Did they trade it? Maybe they traded it. They definitely didn't use it on a goalie either, so that's strange, but no. I don't know where they use that pick, but when you take into account and you look at our Nordiques team that we've got here, it's actually kind of scary based on the fact that when you look at overall ratings, yes, the Nordiques are stacked, but we landed Lars Lander, who could very quickly develop into something amazing if he is developed properly. We got Lars Lander out of that deal. We got, now we've gotten wherever he's gone. We got Gabriel Weimer out of that deal too. And there's still two more first round picks to be made. So we'll see if we can actually make those picks decently or if they're going to kind of flop on us or who knows what. But um, we just landed a ton more talent for this team that is uh, hopefully going to start to translate to more winning seasons, which, you know, we haven't done bad, but we probably could have done a bit better this past season too, as we did lose earlier than obviously I wanted to, but earlier than we probably should have as well. So um, without much further ado, we're going to get to the resign phase as uh, now guys like Jacob Larson and there's at least one other big name contract coming off the books. So Ostafain uh, Buffet is going to expire there as a coach. We will probably be looking into um, into getting a new head coach this upcoming season as really we just need to find a better all-around fit for this team, um, especially with some of the youngsters coming up here too that are going to be playing in the team. We need to really focus on a hold line pinch kind of system, or sorry, a hold line cycle kind of system. So Lucas Raymond. Obviously the biggest name expiree here that we might end up having to trade, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, he could have performed better in the playoffs, right? So yes, he is an 88 overall. And we have sub about 7 million bucks to spend, which is hopefully what he's looking for. But when we look at all the expiring names, Larson, Dylan, Blay, those guys can come off the books. It's more so these young guys that need re-signings. Maybe Cabo Bianco and maybe, well, if Sammy Blay isn't too expensive, we can do that. So, let's see who else is a name. We gotta sign Djordjevic this year and we gotta sign Bishop. So I think that becomes our new starting kind of goalie tandem as, I mean, starting AHL goalie tandem, sorry. Forgive me for that. It's not exactly the same thing. So we'll sign Mike Georgievich. He will get playtime. And same thing with Cameron Bishop. So those guys are all exciting. Uh, Raphael Dearnay has actually turned into an extremely hyped goalie prospect as well. He's not quite a Mike Georgievich, but he's really not that far off either. So without further ado, let's uh, let's offer Kretschmann a deal as well. Um... And then I think we're good, because that'll give Djordjevic some potential playtime for defensemen. The biggest name we need to re-sign here is going to be, like, Lego, who's really just getting his entry-level deal. Capo Bianco, I don't think we need to go for, necessarily. Chelios, yeah, we do. He is expiring, so we'll get Jace Chelios a deal. Um, Safranov shot way up for a sixth-round pick, who was... What did he start at last year? He was a 51 overall, so throwing eight ratings in a year is pretty decent. Um, we'll keep an eye on him. Chelios gets that offer there. Weimer's going to sit for at least a year. Same with Staubitz. Um, and Legault is going to get NHL time, hopefully, as a sixth kind of defenseman. Maybe not, actually, considering he's a seventh overall pick. And we have some other really good guys in here. So minus Larson and Dylan out of this group. We still got one, two, three really top-end defensemen there. And then we got four, five, 
6. Lego would be 7, but we could also potentially see a guy like Pavel Semen be our number 7 defenseman. The only thing with Lego actually playing here is that he might not grow as well, or he might grow better. There's always two sides to it, and you never know which one you're going to get. So, um, with those contracts offered, I'm really kind of dreading offering Lucas Raymond a deal, just based on the fact that he very well might just full-on reject it and be like, nope, I can't accept that deal, and we're going to be like, cool, well, you're walking. So, um, we will sign Lucas Powell here as well. He's going to get a shot. Um, the other guys that are going to get shots at the team is not, unfortunately not going to be Cameron Menard. He just, no, he, he might get a shot, actually. 61.62 games. It's no Ethan Winquist numbers, but... Winquist does need a contract too, especially after the season he just produced. And we'll offer Menard one too. Okay. For centers, um, we walk in anybody? I don't think so. Um, Vasiliev should get a deal as well. All right. Um, and then just Lucas Raymond. Actually, oh, hold on. I missed Rocky Camp Beats down here as well. We're going to have to start kind of weeding out players here soon as far as like, I mean, yes. Sammy Blay is what? He's looking for $2 million, which is too much when we've got a guy like Lucas Raymond who's asking for nine and a half. Are you kidding me? Come on, Raymond. Eight point three. That rule of eighty-five is seven million, so we can bring him in on one year at that. Nine million at eighty-five percent is seven point six. So we're probably not gonna get that. So that kind of sucks. But even though we are probably gonna have to trade him, let's see. Eight point three again. 7.055 million. I mean, I really hope he takes that because then at least we'll have the opportunity to uh, try and re-sign him. But we have so many guys coming into the team now too that are looking decent and could be exciting in the future. I don't know if we're necessarily going to need a guy like Lucas Raymond in the future. Like, yes, he's a great player. He's a solid looking, he should be a two-way forward, he's a solid looking sniper. Um, but we've got other guys on their eyes, like um, Matthias Silvegard might get a decent shot this upcoming year um, for making the team and playing with the Nordiques. Um, so if he doesn't sign, it's not the end of the world, it just kind of sucks. So let's advance a day or two here and see what happens. We are going to get, uh, we're not going to get Bofe. Okay, uh, we're going to just get a bunch of scouts re-signed here as they very usually accept the contracts. Marcelo Go obviously going to join the team. Same with Georgievich. Um, Menard can't accept the deal. Lucas Raymond um, rejects the offer. Great, okay. Vasiliev also can't join due to a full roster. Same with Cam Beats. Same with, oh sorry, we did sign Bishop, we did sign Powell. Same with Chelios. Kretschmann can't join due to full roster. Same with Winquist. Okay. So we get one more kind of go around at this. We're going to start releasing players. So Sammy Blay is gone. Um, the majority of expiring players are gone here. So released, uh, released. Same with Capo Bianco. All right. And then we go. Okay. So that's three more roster spots available. Lucas Raymond. I would love to offer you one year at seven and a half. Please join our team. Okay. Um, so we'll go Vasiliev. We'll go Winquist for sure. And then we'll go Camp Beats for our three new roster spot signings. Uh, for goalies, I want Kretschmann more than a couple of these other guys like Coronar and Tendek. Um, I think Coronar is the first guy that's going to get walked so we will do that and let's advance today so lucas raymond 
does join for just $200,000 more. That's insane. We get Vasilia, we get Gambits, we get Cratchman, we get Windquest. Okay. So, with all of that said and done, I think we can sign Menard. I might be wrong on that, but hopefully he joins. He does. Beautiful. Okay, so that is uh, that is the team. That is the roster and the entirety of the system determined, pushed right to within a million dollars of the budget. And yeah, we're really not going to have a whole lot of wiggle room to go and explore free agency with, which is okay. Um, simply based on the fact that I know we have one of the best rosters in the league here. Only thing I'm ever so slightly concerned about is the fact that um, the goaltending might be a little bit shaky in the AHL this year, but, you know, the team will have to play well in front of those goalies. So I think we're, I mean, we'll check out free agency, but I don't think we're going to be making any big money moves here. So, and if we are, well, it would be doing something along the lines of trading one of our players. So. All right, um, the other thing we were going to look into was potentially getting a new coach. I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen right here, but uh, it would be nice to make sure that the system is fitting as well as it can. So, lots of talent, lots and lots of talent on this team, and it is, uh, it is only going to be a matter of time until this... Nordiques franchise is actually able to get themselves a cup. Um, so I don't think we're even throwing anybody up on the block. We have those two more Winnipeg picks that we are absolutely going to use. Um, 2028 should be an interesting year as we will have two first round picks, but that's still two years down the road. So, um, I mean, let's take a peek at free agency. We obviously tested the waters a couple years ago with some crazy RFA offers and things like such, but big potential wise Forstrom is, uh, the only guy that looks somewhat decent. I hope somebody else signs him. If nobody does, well, that kind of sucks. Um, because he probably should get a signature or an offering. Um, best players available talent wise not super deep this year in free agency to be completely honest nothing that really pops out to you like oh yeah this is definitely a guy we got to try and pursue alex ovechkin 996 goals beautiful career and 1734 points wow ovi has had a career in this franchise save so um carter hart interesting name uko pekalukinen interesting name I wish we could pursue some of these guys, as they all look like great goalies, but unfortunately, I just don't think that's really the case with what we've got available for resources and money and things like such. So let's advance to the next season. I'm sure some of you guys are going to be screaming at your screens or, you know, under your breath, whatever, um, going, why didn't you go for this player? Why didn't you go for that player? Leave it in the comments. I want to hear what your opinions are. Um, even if I don't agree with them, I still love to hear them. So um let's just check out player morale something interesting i did see was the leadership trends like byron potty's a leader like what shane wright leader obviously that actually kind of makes sense um what about the ahl nobody's a leader cool okay so uh next season let's see how the roster shapes up and uh let's get our coaching figured out all right, so heading into the next season, 95% of the tickets sold. That's when you know a team is really trending upwards and looking like they're probably going to win a cup in the next couple of years. As far as owner goals go, we are expected to be within $1.5 million of the salary budget um, win our regular season home opener. Not too many goals, actually, um, but anything short of Stanley Cup is sad. All right, so guys, starting up the next season here and going into the lines, as you can see, we've got some new faces, absolutely. But at the same time, we are going to go and send Tyler Benson down. And in exchange, my dog is asleep on the floor and he's not asleep anymore because I'm talking now. But we're going to move Benson down, bring Ortiz and Williams up because both those guys have deserved more playing time in the NHL than Benson has. So 
Only one 80 rated player as well on our um, AHL team, but that's okay. And now we get to take a peek at the lines and then I'll introduce you guys to some of the new players and new faces that you will see around the team, um, hopefully for seasons to come. So firstly, this is probably the strongest lineup I've ever built in NHL 22. Um, if not any NHL game, like, yes, obviously I built some pretty sweet Oilers teams back in the day, but that's not until like 2035 kind of thing for 2026. So just five years into the future, approximately. Oh my God. Like this team is going to be deadly. Like, look at the sheer depth in this roster. We don't have a forward under the rating of 82. And that makes it very scary for anybody that's got to come up and play against this team. Um, I did notice, though, uh, Matthias Silvergaard did pick up Magnetic and Tape to Tape, which I find interesting considering he's a uh, he's a sniper. But his puck skills aren't exactly there either. He's one of those weird, like, senses and defense kind of guy that will, you know, probably always be in the right position, but isn't necessarily going to put up a 50 goal season in his career. So, um, very interesting fourth round pick. He's like the only player on this team that isn't like a third round or higher pick. I'm pretty sure, except for maybe the only other guy I can think of is, um, maybe Ortmeier, Caleb Ortmeier, but everybody else is like a lottery pick borderline first round. Like, yeah, Timmons is a second rounder, but like, we're starting to slowly see certain guys roll into the team that probably weren't expected to be here, such as Ortmeier and Silvergaard. Like, it was like, okay, nice if they develop, but we're not expecting them to be top-end talents, and they are. So, as you can see here, we also have Marcel go. Williams went undrafted, so we picked him up, and he's actually developed quite nicely into a player. Um... 81 overall, and then of course, Grayson Ortiz, we picked up 23rd overall, so not really surprising that he's made it here either. Um, Legault is a bit of an interesting fit for the team and might end up getting sent down. Um, but overall, like, this team is just looking so deep. Plus five almost everywhere. The team is so good looking, like... doesn't really get much better than that yes we've got zero power play chemistry or zero penalty kill chemistry but who cares when you got a team like this like my god um and the other thing that i did actually find very funny that we might experiment with as this season goes on is the fact that marcel lego actually gets better chemistry than connor timmons simply because he has x factors and i think that's dumb because timmons is a great player but you can see it's one extra chemistry, um, and that is almost it's almost enough for uh, Lego to play over Timmons, but not quite. But yeah, Lego will be a staple of this team in the near future as well, as he's a top end pick, and uh, yeah, this team should probably dominate the league this year just based on the sheer depth the really high top six that we've got and depth as far as guys like literally Barrett Hayton being an 87 overall on the third line playing with some fantastic teammates the team is really good so moving over to the AHL it's not quite as stacked but it's still strong and uh, we do have some prospects we're trying to grow in here such as Ethan Winquist, um, Lucas Powell, guys like that they look very interesting as prospects and who knows if they are actually going to grow or not so he was a 2024 so was he 218 and 200 interesting so 18 picks apart winquist and cam beats are actually looking like they could potentially be good um morris he's finally starting to shoot up at the age of 22 um we knew he was going to be decent but he never really turned into the super insane defender that we thought he might become todd shanahan again from toronto um one of those players we traded for looks really good might get a shot at the nhl this year but yeah like pavel Semin's in here too um marvin strong for a third round pick has turned into a real nice player as well and uh yeah this team just looks so good georgievich 20 years old 
gonna be another one of those guys like look at that five superstar abilities he's just gonna just gonna eat up the ahl as a 78 rated goalie but uh yeah overall this team looks really good um maybe we give tyler benson a shot but yeah overall this team just looks really really solid um i'm not really concerned about the draft class coming up simply based on the fact that whoever we get we get and i'm not really gonna be expecting us to have a pick up high in the draft by any means um looks like there isn't a lot of defenders or players like that either and you know maybe if they're the top end goalie we'll take a peek 66 overall i don't think we're gonna find a goalie much better than mike georgievich in the next five drafts but quote me on that i'll probably be wrong as we'll see some goalie go in the top five of a draft or top 15 or something like that which is insane um and probably will happen at some point but yeah that's where we're gonna wrap it up this team looks stacked so um i hope you guys enjoyed if you did make sure to go down below drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads and of course make sure to leave your comments and thoughts in that box below to possibly get featured and also please feel free to hit the notification bell and do all that good stuff but that's gonna be it for me i hope you guys enjoyed and until next time